Father God, we just thank you again for today. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, Father. Father, we thank you for loving us before we can love ourselves, Father. Father, we just praise you on this morning, Father. We magnify your presence in this place, Father. Father, we thank you for your son, Father. Our perfect example, Father. Father, we thank you for the line of Judah, Father. Father, we thank you for the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings, Father. Father, but more important, we thank you for everything he did for us on Calvary, Father. Father, we thank you for being made righteous in what he's done, Father. Father, we praise and honor you on this morning, Father, because you truly are a worthy God, Father. Father, I thank you for each and every one of us assembled before your throne of grace and mercy on this morning, Father. Father, touch us in a supernatural way, Father. Father, let us not go out as we came in, Father. Be glorified in this place on today, Father. Rain down fresh, Father. Father, we thank you for a new thing on this morning, Father, that you be glorified. Now, Father, we thank you for our shepherds, Father, on this morning, Father. Continue to guard their hearts and their minds, Father, as they chase that thing, Father. Father, we thank you for a new word on this morning, Father. Father, we thank you for a changed heart on this morning, Father. A renewed mind, Father, that we can bring you more praise and honor. Father, I ask that you open hearts to receive the word on this morning, Father. Unclutter our minds, Father, to receive the meat of your word on today, Father. Father, we thank you for a magnificent day in today, Father. We thank you for your amazing grace, Father. Father, we thank you more, for, more importantly, Father, we just love you on today, Father. Father, we praise you, we say hallelujah to you on this morning, Father. Father, we thank you for a mighty church on today, Father. in your word of my Father. We love you. We honor you. We bless you. And this is in the mighty name of Christ Jesus. We say these things to the glory of God. Amen, amen, and amen.
Hallelujah. Sharing your word. We thank you for this time of coming before a vision. Now, Father, for these moments that we've been allotted, we pray to get to a speak to us. Father, in the heart that's gathered here on this morning in this place. Father, let your word not only be relevant, but let it prick. Be very famine in the call I be. Father, then do it that your name might be glorified. We bless you for it in advance. And just by faith in you, I call it done. It's in Jesus' precious name I do pray. Amen, amen, amen. Can we come on, give Jesus a
and been in my shoes, you can't testify like I testify. You can't walk because see, you're willing to let somebody chase you.
like Jesus. Emotionally, but physically and emotionally. 
relational in our relational areas and our job areas and our entrepreneurship desires. God wants to increase us more, more and more. Somebody said more and more. David declared, he says, he daily loaded us with benefits. Somebody say every day. Which means that every day we are on this planet, God desires to download us and to flood our lives with benefits that come from God and the systems of God. But one of the things you always must understand is if you and I pay attention to the signs of the time, it is not hard to notice how much our culture has changed over the last 10 to 20 years. I know that's right. If you've been around here at least 30 years or more, you can see how our society has made a drastic decline from the days of yesteryear until now. I mean, it has gone out of style when, I mean, I recall the time when it was okay to say yes, ma'am. And yes, sir. And yes, ma'am. And come on, how many of y'all remember the day? Come on, man. It, it was cool to say that. As a matter of fact, when our parents called us, we couldn't say a huh. Amen. Come on, we couldn't say what. Ask you a question, you couldn't go. You find yourself waking up and hearing already next week. Come on, anybody had your parents had one of those anointed back hands? Come on, like the violent man. <laughs> you were singing good night, sweet hard good night. Y'all ain't talking back to me. I can still recall the days you walked away. It was proper protocol to put a handle on the name of an adult. Amen. I itch when I hear children calling grown folk by their first name. You know, Mother Curry, I remember them days. I could just call you Annie Curry. It was either Miss Annie, Miss Curry, Mother Curry, or Mama. Come on, somebody. You can't call them by their first name. Come on, I think before, I, I never forget when somebody, I, 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 a little boy's friend said, they said, what's your, your mother's first name? I said, Mama. <laughs> no, I ain't talking about you. All I, 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 I ever called was Mama. Come on. When then they said, go tell your mama, I can lose her. Come on. Rest of other jokers. <laughs> Come on. You mama, mama get any won't you? But it had become more unpopular. It had become uh, 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 a, 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 a twisted theology. When a child thinks it's okay to put themselves on the same level. I know that's right. Yeah, he talked back to me. You said something, Pastor. You said something. The problem is, you are in our society, there's something that we have let go and refused to address. And now we have a high level of disrespect where children are talking back to their parents. God ain't talking back to me. The other day, uh, my son had me laughing here. This little six month, with my eight month old baby, he said something to her and she went, hello, hello, hello. he said, oh, you talking back? I said, oh Lord, I see myself coming out already. Because he, he, he tells the offering, I ain't going to tolerate that though. But we live in a society, you all watch this now, where our leaders are telling us as parents that we can't chastise our kids. Yet if my child does something that you don't like, you will put your foot on my child's neck. And say they have a toy gun and think it's okay. Y'all ain't talking about that. Somebody said the culture is changing. The culture is changing. I recall the days when, when parents were all, we would spend time with our kids after school. Come 
home from work, or kids come from school and if the kids had homework, mom and dad would sit down and show the kids how to do their homework. If they didn't know how to do it, they would fake it until they learned something. Amen. 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 They would sit down and educate those children and tell them how life is and tell them how to add and how to multiply and how to read and how to write. But that, that's a lost art. Because if y'all call uh, ever since Barney came out, things have changed. Come on. No, I ain't by myself. When Barney came out, everything changed. See, I recall when we would get on Saturday morning and watch TV. See, we didn't watch them crazy cartoons. We watched them Junction Junction. Yes, what's your function? That's right, Pastor. Amen. Come on. That's how I passed the Constitution text. Come on. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, come on, y'all. Yes. Yes. And so the kid comes from my eighth grade test. I knew, I knew it. I just sung to myself. Come on, I got a perfect score. Because of what's it? Because we were made to learn. But now you are in our culture. We have substituted personal time spent, and we now on our Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok to bring up kids. Now some of you grown folks can't figure out what TikTok is. Let me tell you what it is. TikTok, and I hope they're watching. Put it on my face close. I'm going to see my face. Mr. TikTok have allowed grown women to get on their social media outlet and shake their backsides half naked for our little kids to watch. And now our kids think it's cool to jump in their butt the whole day. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Our culture is changing. And they made our children think it's okay to shake your butt. And then when they grow and become some little holes, you come on, what's happening my there? Peace at home in church. I said home in church. Tell him the truth, Pastor. Close the door, Pastor. I 
house, every door in the house is mine. You don't call them going to my house, this is my house. Y'all can see, y'all scared of y'all kids. I ain't scared of nothing I got here. If they move in today, I don't care. You under my roof, it's my rules. Y'all like it, they're going to go, sit in the garage, and that's mine too. Y'all, I'm in the wrong church today. The world is taking a culture that we don't agree with. But because we rather be our children's friend than be their parents. Listen, my kids are grown, but I still ain't their friend, Mother God. I love my boy, but ain't they friend, ain't they daddy. I create an atmosphere, they can tell me anything they want to tell me. I ain't going to judge them, but I'm going to tell you the truth. If you wrong, you wrong. If you don't want to hit, don't bring it to me because I'm going to tell you the truth. Y'all, oh, I'm in the wrong house today, Lord. Maybe I should preach something else today. Let me preach on prosperity or something. Maybe they'll shout today. But how do we intend to increase in a declining culture if those of us who know how to do it don't train about children? The Bible says to train up the child in the way that he should go. Bible never said leave that child by himself. Why? Because your child don't know nothing. How do you let me know you already you already know already? Why? Because how you nineteen you already know. <laughs> You, you say it sometimes. You haven't lived enough to know everything yet. Oh, folks, say you still got milk behind your knees. In some other places, too. But you think you already know. And what's happening, family, if we don't, if we don't put that in check, it is going to get out of control. And the Bible said a child, watch this, the Bible said a child left alone will bring shame to that mother. See, why you saying don't bother my child? And what if God want me to live right? How many of y'all don't care what your child do? Make sure I can see it. Come on. How many of y'all don't care what your child do? You don't care if they crazy, on crack, do drugs, kill folk, rob folk, steal folk, smoke weed, smoke weed, shoot dope. You don't care what that child does. Come on, see here, come on, you don't care. Raise your hand, you don't, come on. Wait your hand. And so wait a minute then, if you care about what your child does, Right. How much more does God care about what his children do? Right. A few weeks ago, you were done with resting uh, in the covenant. Uh-huh. And when I look here at this text, Paul you all is giving us an overwhelming assurance uh, to the believer that God has committed himself to us. Oh, how many of you have been that God has committed himself to me? Oh, come on, say God has committed himself to me. I'm glad that God has committed himself to me. In other words, no matter what the landscape of our culture looks like, God says, I'm for you. He says, I'm for you. I'm for my children. Something that God is for me. Let me give you a proof text. Look at Romans 8. Look at verse 31 and 32. Romans 8. Look at verse 1 and verse 32. Paul says, What shall we say to these things? Watch this class. Paul says, That word if is the wrong word. In the original uh, uh, Greek, it says sex. It says, Since God be for us, who can be against us. All right. Now watch this. The Apostle Paul is trying to convey 
that since God is on my side, it does not matter what culture dictates. It doesn't matter what culture brings in our lives. If God is on my side, who or what can be against me? Let me go old school now. You recall over in First Kings, the First Kings, the the eighteenth uh, chapter, around verse twenty. Here it is. Uh, Elijah was one against Ahab. He says, Elijah wants want to know. He says, Who is on the Lord's side? He said, If God be God, and if Baal be God, let them show themselves by fire. He says, Sacrifice a, a goat or bull. Cut them in half, put them on bricks, put them on wood, and the God that answered by fire will be God. Right. Now watch this. Elisha said, you press the bell, y'all go first. Right. Now don't mess this. Right. See, because when you know God is on your side, you have no problem standing for God. He said, y'all go first. And the Bible says, that these men begin to chant rapidly, trying to get their bail God to move. All night, calling on that God. And Elijah is standing in the cut. He said, he says, maybe your God is death. Maybe your God, watch this, is on a bathroom break. Maybe he just took a vacation. And they took their worship for Baal to another level. They began to cut themselves as their ritual did to make Baal do what he could not do. And I just said, now, I'm going to show you that God is on my side. <laughs> he said, dig a trench. He said, put some water over each other. They put a whole thing of water in the trench. He said, he said, wait a minute, that 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 y'all ain't enough water. Give me some more water. Put some more over there. Now you don't put water where fire is supposed to be. But when you're confident in God, you don't care what you gotta do because you know your confidence is in God. Four more times said, fill this thing up completely with, with water. Now watch this. He didn't do no dancing. Right. No chanting. Right. Because he understood that God was committed to him. Yeah. And the Bible says that God that answered by fire. Yeah. 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 And what the Bible say? That fire came down from him. Yeah. Right. I don't miss this. It came, watch this. It consumed the sacrifice. But watch this, it also consumed, but really it consumed the rocks. Now, what kind of fire? How hot is the fire? Well, fire consumed the rocks. But then it said, it lit up the wall. Oh, I gotta see God. God said, not only will I do what I said I'll do, but I will take away all the evidence of my impossibility. And then he went on to kill and slay those false prophets. That's the word you're saying. Because when you know that God is for you, when you know that God is for you, somebody say God is for me. When you know in your know that God is for you, you know that can't no devil in hell take you down. Can't no devil in hell steal your life. No witch, no warlock destroy what God had determined for your life. Somebody declares that God is on my side. But look, though, watch this in verse 32. He said, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Watch this, no business. He said, How shall he, meaning God, not with him, meaning Jesus, also freely give us as you and I all things. He said, because I'm on your side, and because you're 
on my side. There is nothing that you need that I won't give to you. Oh, somebody said there's something. There's nothing that you need that if God's got it, God knows how to get it in your hands. Is there anybody in this house who knows that God knows how to get some stuff in your hands? Maybe it's just me. Maybe God has put some stuff in my hands that I didn't deserve. God has touched me in ways and in places that I didn't deserve. He's given me some stuff that I know I didn't deserve. But all because of his grace and because of his mercy, he gave it to me anyway. And I want to give it anybody here who knows that God knows how to give it to you anyway, please. Somebody said he'll give it to you anyway. Understand the Apostle Paul wrote living times, much like ours, when 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 just using the name of Jesus, you would consider an outcast. They call us holy robes. I don't mind being called a holy roller. Because I might be called a holy roller than to roll in hell. Call me a holy roller. They have a song that says, I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm so glad. So call me what you got to call me. Just don't call me late for the rest. God ain't talking to me. Better say what you want to say. Do what you gotta do. But when, when the trumpet sound, Lord, don't leave me here. But in this culture, in this season, in this time, it is unpopular to call on the name of Jesus. You don't believe it? Go to a restaurant and start praying. Get your food that you pay for, and before you consume it, just start praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless this food. Sanctify. Take out all the impurities. Let it be filling and nothing for my body. Somebody by you gonna do this here. But they can cuss at the restaurant. They can smoke at the restaurant. They can do all kinds of things at the restaurant. But you can't pray. Our culture is changing. This morning I want to give you. I'm going to try to do one today. I got four. I'm going to try to give you one today. I'm going to pray right now. Uh, in this lesson, all that, that to help us understand that in this season, in this culture, God wants you and I to increase in a declining culture. Now, before you think I'm talking about money, I'm not. Because the moment we say increase, your mind thinks money. But watch this. I am more concerned about your soul increasing. The Bible said, what for the confident man? To gain the whole world and lose the soul. I can put you until you become a billionaire. But to die and go to hell, I promise you, you can't pay your way out of hell. Y'all ain't talking back to me. I said you can't. And so I talk about today how to improve our lifestyle. How to increase in our lifestyle. But you ask the person say, how you living, how you living. Now, if they got scared and turned their and kept their face straight, if they didn't bullet, then they probably already in trouble. Because here you all is the problem we have in the society. It is not that we don't have folks coming to church. Amen. But we have folks coming to church who know about God, but don't know God. Pick up again. I said we have folks who can say it in the Hebrew, they can say it in the Greek, they can say it in the Latin, they can say it in Aramaic, they can say it in Spanish. They know about God, but don't know God. That word know in the Greek means to have an intimate relationship with God. And this family is one of the things that's missing in our culture. George, in this culture, people want to go to heaven, but don't want to do what it takes to get there. You can't just say, I want to know God, but don't want to live 
by the system of God. When I was a little boy, I heard the saying, they said, if, 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 if I can't correct you, I'll put you down. That's both part. What can I tell you what he really said? He said, if, I, if you're going to come up at me in my life, I can't. That was QC Senior. I believe that. Y'all ain't talking about that. So I told my kids, I said, if you ever disrespect me and come at me, I kill you. And I meant what I said. But I had one of my children say, Dad, would you really shoot me? Daddy, would you really shoot me? Really, I told him, I said, if you disrespect me, if you ever swing at me and hit me, ever try to hurt me, or do harm to me, I gotta treat you like somebody I don't know. Because my first instinct is to protect me. If you ever, if you ever do your mama that way, you better call on Jesus and hope he answers prayer. Right now, like it, that's my wife. And she might put my wife before she was your mama. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Get my point. We want all the benefits of God. The benefits of heaven. But we really don't want God to know God. Because when my desire is to know God, everything else becomes secondary. Now, I love preaching prosperity because prosperity is part of our covenant promise. But if I don't teach you how to have a relationship with Jesus, as your pastor, I have done you a disservice for not teaching you how to love God more than you love money. How to love God. I'm 
you fainted in here. Come on, somebody. Uh, and what the enemy will do is take your desire and cause that desire to be perverted to cause us to do things that the word tells us we shouldn't do. Now, I ain't going to tell you to not sin. I ain't going to tell you that. Say, Pastor, why not? Because if I tell you to not sin, you go and sin. You know, folks crave the very thing you tell them not to do. And don't worry, you ain't the first person. You in the company. Adam did it. Eve did it. God said, don't touch me. They went and grabbed it. And Sarah, you in the company. Wait, God, you hear my point? Let's deal with connecting to God. When God desires that you and I connect with Him, imagine, here it is, God Almighty is desirous of a relationship with His creation. When I was in school, I made a dummy out of clay. But I never desired to have a relationship Come on, how many y'all came and playing in school? Come on. I ain't never said, oh, I just love my clay. There's some kind of clay like a damn. But the Bible said, God formed the man from the dust of the ground. Then breathed into that man, and that man became a living soul. And then God desired then was to establish a relationship with the very thing that he made. And the enemy came in and took a desire that God created for the man. See, see we've been taught in church that sex is bad. Sex ain't no bad word. Sex was God's idea. He told Eve and Adam, said, go in, he said, multiply and replenish. Yeah. Ain't but one way you can do that. Amen. All the folk who know say, I know that's right. Come on. And the enemy has took what God has created you on and perverted God's creation. And the plan of God. Pastor what do you mean? I'm saying that you are for believers. It is time for us to connect with God by giving God what is all of us. Come on, because they all of me. Now, what's this wrong? Here's the bad part about Christendom. A lot of us, a lot of y'all, some of y'all, maybe the person in your seat. <laughs> have not given God all of me. That's the way you say. See, giving God all of me does not suggest I'm perfect and without error or flaw. But giving God all of me simply says, God, I am willing to live and govern my life by the system that governs heaven and earth. You can call what Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and it is in heaven. He said, allow your system that governs heaven to be the same rule that governs on earth. Which means then, if Jesus prayed it, that the heart and the will and the desire of God that the same that we live are the rule that governs heaven. And I love this. The problem is, <laughs> you want the benefits Preach again. of God. Preach again, but don't want to live by the rules that govern. You can't go to work, or I'm sorry, you can you can not show up for work, but still want to check. Come on, you can decide well, I ain't, I ain't, ain't going to work for four or five months. Don't keep paying me. No, baby. They're going to fire you. 
See, I would say this. It's the goodness of God that lead men to repentance. God is saying, I'll do something good to you, something good for you, hoping you will choose me over this other stuff. And what's happening is, we're getting some benefits and we're thinking that God is not watching. Did we see so quiet here? I can look ahead at you. Don't hurt that.
Tories gonna talk about committing to God. No, the green is gonna teach about getting consecrated before God. And then I'm gonna have with the sergeant deal with how to cherish God.
God, give us to connect with you. We thank you. And we praise you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I have one more prayer. If you hear today, Pastor, I'm already saying, we and God, okay. What I want to do is to join my faith with your faith and be part of this ministry. If you're here, if you're not already a member of this church, say, Pastor, I'm going to join this book of body of believers. Guess what? I'm going to be your pastor. And we will live in fellowship with you. If you want to say, Pastor, I'm going to be part of this ministry. Is that one? Because I didn't shout you.